Hello, welcome to the Scratch Coding class. So, so in today's video of the Lego Mindstorms EV3 guide, we are going to be focusing on motors today. And if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And let's get started. So for today's video, we are going to be looking at a brand new motor, and this is called the medium motor. And it basically works similarly to a large motor. And we are also going to be looking at rotation sensors. And if you didn't check out the last videos of the series, make sure to do so. And also, today's video is probably going to be the last programming video before we start our first big project, which is to break this robot and build a brand new one. So that will be happening in the next video. So we've got a problem when attaching this medium motor onto the robot because the color sensor and the touch sensor is in the way and it's just going to feel very very squashed if I put it behind right there and we can't really see it in action. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically going to move the color sensor behind the touch sensor and then I'm just going to put the medium motor on the left of the robot. And to do this all you'll need is just one wire, the medium motor itself and then you'll need two friction pins. So let's get started with that. So what we need to do is remove this first of all. And then we need the two friction pins currently inside that I need to pull out. And then we need to put this to the left of the sensor. Previously it was on the right side, now we need it on the left side. And then after we do that we just put it behind the touch sensor. And then we need to just slot it in like so. And that is basically the colour sensor now in. And what we need to do is First of all, we need the medium motor go to the right side and then we need to add two friction pins in. And then I'm going to put it right here. And then we need to go to the back and then we need to add a wire. And remember, motors use the letters. So we have A or D, I'm gonna choose this one in A. So I'm just gonna put it in like so. And there we have it. We have a new medium motor for our robot. So I want to make sure you can actually see the medium motor moving, so to do that we're going to need one of these, so this side is an axle and this side is just attached um, a specific friction pin and then we're going to need a free long beam. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the side of the axle inside the medium motor like so and then I just want to put this facing upwards and you're going to see how this works when we're going to move on to rotation sensors so just keep it like that the beam facing upwards so in scratch we can control the motor similarly to when we would control large motors all we need is these two blocks to make the motor move and watch for the medium motor to see what happens there we go, it turned clockwise and then anti-clockwise. And what I'm really interested in in today's video is the rotation sensor and basically inside the motor there's actually a built-in sensor that detects how many degrees the motor has turned. So 360 degrees will be one full rotation of the motor. And we can use this block and this will basically tell us and the position is currently at 3 right now. Let's say if I just turn it for let's say 0.3 seconds. Now the position should definitely be greater than 3 and there it is, it's 205. So as you can see the robot's motor position uh, did increase there because I made a turn. If I make a turn again however, it goes back up to 43 and that's because uh, once you reach 359 degrees it will go back to 0 degrees to start a new circle. And we are going to be doing lots of programs with this so let's get started. So for our first program we're going to test something, so in the second video of the series I challenge you to make the robot turn 90 degrees and we're going to make the motor turn 90 degrees and we're going to see if it makes a perfect turn or it's just going to do something else. So first of all we need one green flag clicked as usual and then we need a repeat until block and then we need to go into operators, get a greater than and then we need to type in the value 90. So basically uh, we need motor B position and then what I'm going to do is going to make motor B turn and I'm going to go let's say 0.05 seconds so basically the motor B position right now is currently at 0 and once it reaches greater than 90 it's going to stop moving so now let's test this out okay that was basically the robot moving 90 degrees as you can see there and you'll notice that that isn't a 90 degree turn and why is that? 
That's because a motor moving 90 degrees does not mean the actual robot will turn 90 degrees. It depends how many rotations the motor needs to turn 90 degrees and that's a large motor so it's going to need way more degrees to rotate to make a perfect 90 degree turn. So now you have to really remember that turning a motor a certain number of degrees does not mean that you, you, whatever you want to do, uh, like move the robot, will turn just that a number of degrees. And we're going to move to the next program. So for this next program, what I want to do is every time I press basically the space bar, the media motor is going to rotate. And if the media motor's rotation is greater than 180 degrees, when I press the touch sensor, something's going to happen. And if it's not, then something else is going to happen. So first of all, we need to actually make the media motor turn, and that is really, really easy. We just need one space key pressed. And I'm actually going to lower the power of the media motor to, let's say, 20% and then I just want it to turn that way for half a second and that is what happens when I press the space key and then when button 1 press which is the touch sensor then what we need to do is get an if else condition and then we need a greater than and then we need to type in 180 and then we need motor a position so basically if the motor A position is greater than 180 degrees then let's say I get the robot to turn and then turn back again so just something like that you can maybe make that a bit more exciting instead of just turning it but for now I'm just gonna stick with that and if it isn't then what I can do is I can let's say just get the sprite to say something so get the sprite to say uh, below 180 so that is the possibility of this program you can keep expanding it and now what I'm gonna do is press the space key a bit and let's press the touch sensor it says below 180 and it is and let's see what the position actually is so motor A position is currently at 141 and uh, as you can see right there that does make sense because if this thing is pointing downwards then that means that would be 180 degrees so scratch is correct now let's do this again press it a few more times I think that's good and I'm gonna press touch sensor there we go it turned because the uh, motor position was greater than 180 so you can experiment with that program and make some adjustments to it but I am going to move on to the final program. So basically for this program I'm going to get the robot to be constantly moving its medium motor and every time the medium motor reaches a certain motor position which is basically a full rotation then I'm going to get the robot to turn. So this script right here constantly moves the medium motor so I've set the power quite low and then uh, this is like a timer so you can actually adjust the speed of the motor um, moving and then you can make the timer quicker and then we've got uh, this script right here which actually makes the robot move so if the motor position is greater than 0 and less than 20 because I, in my testing I found out it's very difficult for the rotation sensor to get an exact value uh, while the motor is moving constantly quite fast and then we just move motor B at quite low power so you can see it and now we are going to test it. So the robot is now in action and as you can see it is working perfectly. There are every single rotation the robot is turning slightly and I've actually adjusted the code so this time the position is from 0 to 30 instead of 0 to 20 because it wasn't as consistent so now it's working basically every single time and I'm going to stop the robot before it falls off my table. So that is going to be it for today's video of the Scratch Coding class. I hope you have enjoyed looking at uh, motors and as I said the next video is going to be a big building video so we're going to do, be doing a lot of building so you definitely don't want to miss that. Make sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.